Dr. Benjamin is a, uh, is a very hot topic today. It's hotter than it's ever been. Uh, and in some years it's been hot, in some years it's been cold, in some years it's been zero, and in some years it's been 100%. And that's all because of the attitude of dispensers has changed as circumstances have changed. But today, there's, in the world of hearing aid dispensing, there is a lot of competition. There's competition from outfits that are selling hearing aids, dispensing hearing aids online, uh, from Costco, Walmart, Sam's Club, and all of these kinds of things that we just didn't have before. There are audiologists that dispense hearing aids, and they dispense them out of ear, nose, and throat physicians' offices, speech and hearing clinics, private practices, and hospitals. Uh, but there are also dispensers of hearing aids that are not audiologists. They are simply technicians. Uh, and they're all competing for a very large group of individuals. They're baby boomers like me that are um, reaching their 60s and, um, and will be, if they're not already, in, um, in need of hearing aids. In our days, when we grew up in the 60s and 70s, we certainly used, we certainly listened to a lot of real loud rock and roll. Okay? Those were the days, and hearing protection, we just never even heard about it. You know? um, so, one thing that is important is for an audiologist who dispenses to distinguish themselves from the other dispensing organizations. And one way to do that is to merge art and science. Many dispensers have developed an art of dispensing. Um, they have very good um, technique, sales technique, with their patients. They develop good rapport with their patients. Their patients love them. They bring them cakes. Um, and therefore, they do well as far as the numbers of hearing aids that they dispense. Um, and even, even the perceived um, value that patients get. However, it's an art. And I'll show you how those fittings are when you use art alone. The fittings are not what they should be. Ideally, you would have an art like that because you need it, but also merge science with that. And when you do, that's when you'll do um, the best job for, for the patient. It's important to look at this, and very few graduate students in audiology do look at this, uh, because, hey, I'm not a salesman, I'm an audiologist, I'm a clinician. But when it comes to hearing aids, there is an aspect of sales. You know? um, and it might be uh, a big difference even in an audiologist's income, depending on how they're paid, whether it's a straight salary or whether it's salary plus commission mission is usually on the hearing aids, or if they're in private practice, then they certainly want to be able to dispense as many hearing aids as possible. So that's the only reason I show you this slide. And it has to do with real ear measurement and other measurements of a hearing aid, because it, this, these devices are very helpful in you doing these things. If you were to sell anything, if I were trying to sell you this Verifit, one thing that for sure that I would have to do, if somebody sells you a car, somebody sells you uh, an, an iPhone, a Blackberry, an iPad, whatever it is, they have either created or shown you that you need this, right? So it's important to be able to show the patient, in our case, um, the need for a hearing aid. And I'll show you how to use devices like the Verifit to show the, the patient their need for a hearing aid. To demonstrate need is important. And also to demonstrate benefit. Yeah, you need this. Um, and if you get this, here I can show you what the benefit will be. And every sale involves um, 
demonstrating a need and demonstrating a benefit. You also have to, as a good salesperson, conveys personal enthusiasm. You know? Because if you're not enthusiastic about the product, if you don't believe in it yourself, in your heart of hearts, then it's going to be very difficult to convey something that's false to someone else. You know? People believe things that they see enthusiasm about. And they can read in the person that's trying to tell it to them that this is the truth, that this person believes this. Uh, it's a sense that we all have, an intuition. Um, and people will come up with objections. Yeah, but it costs too much. Yeah, but I won't figure out how to use this. Um, and part of the job is to overcome those objections. You know? um, and actually to inspire confidence in the patient. The patient has confidence that, first of all, what you're saying is true. Um, they have confidence in your integrity, and they also have confidence in your ability as a clinician, and that you want what's best for them, and that uh, you'll do whatever it takes to make that happen. And then finally, to be a resource. You know? Sandra was saying how much she, uh, she likes Metacoustics and, and, and me, um, uh, and Auburn acquires their audiological equipment through, through Metacoustics. And uh, I'm grateful for that as well, because it's a mutual relationship. You know? uh, but I think the reason why, is, as she, as she clearly stated, is that we have become, not only me, but the company, um, a resource for the clinic here at Auburn. When something is needed, um, or when something has to be known, or there is a, a problem, then uh, we are a resource to find that information, get whatever is necessary, solve the problem uh, in a way that is most efficacious and uh, efficient and timely. You know? So you, should, you need to be that same thing for the, for the patient. The patient, you're, you're a resource that they, that they know they can always call on. And when they do call, they get a response, uh, a, a, a quick response. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, uh, they also get whatever they need or whatever problem that it is uh, sufficiently solved. Uh, so the reason I show you this is because as we talk about these things this afternoon, this is what we'll have in mind, how all of this can be enhanced by, by properly using a piece of equipment like this. Okay? It's something that most people in programs like this don't talk about um, or might not realize. But this, it's, it's important when it comes to hearing aids. And you might have heard this, you might not have, but only 20% of people who dispense hearing aids use any type of measurement of the hearing aid. 30% have some piece of equipment. If you poll them, 30% will say that they have some piece of uh, hearing aid measurement equipment. Whether it's a hearing aid analyzer, or a real ear measurement, or both, 30% um, of them have a device. But only 20% Will, will claim that they use that on all or most of their fittings. You know? uh, so why not? Why is it 100%? Why is it that it's only 20%? Well, here's two reasons why it might be. Real ear measurement uh, has all these benefits that I'm going to show you. Well, why wouldn't you use it? Well, these two myths have been um, pretty widespread. And that is that real ear measurements are not needed with digital hearing aids. And all hearing aids today are digital. There was a day, 10 years ago, beyond, uh, where all hearing aids weren't digital. Uh, some were linear hearing aids. Uh, and 
there's a vast difference in complexity in the way that they process uh, their, the input, whatever sound there is, and the way they process speech. But today they're all hearing aids. They, I'm sorry, they're all digital hearing aids, and there is a myth going around, and it's pretty widespread, that you don't need real ear measurement with today's digital hearing aids. It's all taken care of by the manufacturer, the fitting software, and the, uh, uh, and the programming device, and the hearing aid itself. Uh, and the next myth is real ear measurements can't be used on digital hearing aids, even if you wanted to. They're not needed, but if you thought they were and you wanted to do it, you can't do it on digital hearing aids. It's not effective. And so because of those two myths, um, um, a lot of dispensers don't make any kind of measurement. The one, many of them that have some piece of equipment, you find that that piece of equipment is in a closet somewhere on a back shelf that has collected dust. If you open it up, it's got a bunch of old hearing aids in it, uh, hearing aid batteries in it, a couple of old hearing aids in it, um, and nobody remembers how to use it. It might not even work. Uh, and certainly it's out of date to the point where that particular instrument wouldn't be usable today, probably anyway. 